The final item of business today is the Members' Business Debate on Motion No. 9947 in the name of Liz Smith on the centenary of Perth Royal Infirmary. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons as soon as possible. I call on Liz Smith to open the debate. Seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I'm very grateful to you and to parliamentary colleagues for allowing me to secure this members' debate this evening, albeit a little later uh, than was uh, possible for some people to attend. Uh, long before I became an MSP in 2007, I became uh, extremely aware of just how much Perth Royal Infirmary has such a special place in the hearts of many residents across Perthshire and Kinrosshire, and rightly so. The staff who have worked and who currently work at the hospital have provided first-class care, uh, life-saving care in many cases, to the local community over the past 100 years. 2014 is, of course, a big year for national commemorations, but it is important not to forget that there are many local comm commemorations and that they will be taking place in uh, this particular instance on the 10th of July, uh, which marks, as I say, the 100th anniversary of the opening of Perth Royal Infirmary. It is unquestionable that our public health services have come a very long way in the intervening 100 years. Life expectancy, for example, has increased from 49 and 45 years for men and women respectively at the turn of the last century to 80 and 76 for women and men today. Infant mortality has fallen by over 100% and if in 1914 pneumonia, influenza and tuberculosis were among the most common causes of death, they are now amongst the least common. And today on the news we hear about a quadruple amputee being accepted for a pioneering operation in Leeds to provide her with two new hands. And in the last few weeks, two of our major Scottish universities have continued to make their outstanding contributions to the provision of groundbreaking cancer treatment. Of course, the first half of the 20th century also saw major improvements in access to and standards within the system of public health provision, some of which built upon the Education Act of 1908, providing compulsory medical inspection of school children. Major reasons for these significant improvements are due to the advances in medical science and technology and to better education, but also to the dedicated professionalism of our doctors and nurses and the vast numbers of support staff who do so much for our patients, and it is to them that we pay tribute this evening. For Perthshire, the development of the National Health Service saw the Perth City and County Infirmary completed in 1838 by city architect William Macdonald Mackenzie. The hospital saw multiple changes, but eventually proved far too small for the growing uh, city of Perth's requirements. James Miller was then commissioned to design a new hospital and began work in 1912 on the Glasgow Road site, uh, two years later seeing the new Perth Royal Infirmary open its doors. Perth Royal Infirmary was uh, opened uh, by King George V and Queen Mary as part of their Scotland-wide tour. Accompanied by the troopers of the Scottish Horse Guards, the royal couple paraded along County Place amidst a sea of local support. And it was a time, obviously, when women did not have the franchise, and there were considerable protests that day from leaflet-wielding suffragettes. And reports state in some of the excellent archives held in the hospital that a startled king was confronted by some of the radical ladies who latched themselves onto the car and were unceremoniously dragged away. However, fortunately, these incidents did not spoil the day too much and Perth Royal Infirmary was opened as planned. The intervening hundred years have seen many changes and with health services increasingly become centralised as a result of the rationalisation of services at national level, there are significant challenges for PRI in terms of its future place in the community. As such, many residents across Perthshire and Kinrosshire and many of the staff within PRI have, on an ongoing basis, expressed their concerns that removal of services such as the maternity ward, paediatrics, pathology and weekend surgery will perhaps have a detrimental effect on the future of Perth Royal Infirmary as an acute district general hospital. This is something that MSPs on all sides of this chamber have fought against. And I hope that this centenary anniversary will not only celebrate the very distinguished past of the hospital, but also reaffirm the commitments from NHS Tayside to ensure that Perth Royal Infirmary remains a fully equipped acute district uh, general hospital and serve what is, again, a quickly growing population of Perthshire and Kinrosshire. It is very clear that Perth Royal Infirmary has been a very precious asset for the local community, providing not only many local jobs and high quality health care throughout that 100-year history, but it has also brought many people together. 
The centenary provides an opportunity to both thank and acknowledge the staff, both past and present, at PRI. The first-class medical care given to the patients from numerous communities and backgrounds is testament to their professionalism and their dedication. Deputy Presiding Officer, looking to the future, there are huge challenges in the realms of providing specialised health care which has to reflect the changing needs and changing social structures. These challenges have been acutely felt at PRI and we know only too well that there are deep-seated concerns amongst the local community about what this could mean for the future of PRI, particularly in terms of the availability of certain health services and staffing levels. If the highly successful hands-off PRI campaign taught us anything, it was the very strong bond that there is between the hospital and the local community. And I'm sure we are all clear in this chamber that nothing must happen to undermine the ability of PRI to provide what has always been a first-class hospital. I thank them for that service and I wish the hospital every success in the future. Many thanks. I now turn to the open debate. Speeches of around four minutes, please. And I call Annabel Ewing to be followed by Rudy Grant. Uh, thank you, presiding officer, and I would like to congratulate Liz Smith on securing this debate uh, uh, this evening and giving us the opportunity to mark the centenary of Perthrow Infirmary. And in so doing, I would, of course, wish at the outset to pay tribute to the care that doctors, nurses and all the other staff of the PRI have given to the people of Perth and Perthshire and indeed in neighbouring Kinrosshire down through the years. And I would also wish to commend the volunteers who give up their time to make the lives of patients and visitors easier as they pass through uh, the hospital. In fact, the, the PRI grew out of the Perth City and County Infirmary, which was opened in 1838 and whose elegant main building now houses Perth's famous Achey Bell Library. Uh, and indeed, the records for the PRI show the way in which the cost of hospital building has increased over the years. And in that regard, it may interest the, interest the Chamber to note that whilst the cost of land purchase uh, and building the original hospital, which we now know as the AK Bell Library, was a little over £6,812. The new Perth Royal Infirmary was built in 1914 in Tamant Terrace and cost £36,000. And that sum was largely secured from donations, subscriptions and fundraising. That figure uh, can be contrasted with the development in 2006 when teaching hospital status was gained in conjunction with the University of Dundee, which opened a £5 million clinical research centre uh, at the PRI, which research centre concentrates on chronic diseases such as asthma. Um, I think it's appropriate also to note, presiding officer, in this year when we commemorate 100 years since the outbreak of the First World War, that further to the hospital being constructed on the Cornhill estate between the years of 1911 and 14, it was pressed into use straight away as a war hospital during that conflict. Uh, there are many uh, buildings and add-ons, as, as Liz Smith has said. We saw the maternity block added in 1926-27. We've seen major developments uh, come in the 60s and new wards built into the hillside at the end of the 70s with an extension uh, uh, to have accidents and emergency facilities in the late 80s. And we saw also uh, the establishment of a cancer care centre uh, in 2007. But the PRI really is close to people's hearts, not for any particular connection to any of these buildings, presiding officer, but rather in terms of what these buildings mean as far as the local provision of health care to the citizens of Perth and Perthshire and beyond is concerned. And indeed, when maternity services were under threat, and I'm sure Liz Smith will remember that battle well, in the early years of the last decade, folk indeed took to the streets in great numbers as part of the community-led hands-off PRI campaign. Unfortunately, despite the wishes of the local community and the best efforts of all those involved in the campaign, and I see the local uh, MSP John Swinney here tonight, and he was very much involved in that campaign as well, uh, as was I, because I was the local Westminster MP for Perth at the time. But despite all these efforts, consultant-led maternity services were still transferred to Nine Wells in Dundee. However, there was a partial success in that whilst there was a very real threat at one point that there would be no maternity services at all in Perth, the Hands Off PRI campaign did secure a community maternity unit staffed by midwives. And I would take this opportunity to pay tribute to the women who gave up so much of their personal time to spearhead that fantastic campaign, community campaign, and also to the midwives and all the other NH staff for making sure that women could still give birth uh, at PRI. And in fact, the community maternity unit is now, at, as we speak, celebrating its 10th anniversary. And I join in the congratulations to the outstanding team based there for their sterling uh, service to women and families uh, throughout Perthshire and Kinrosshire. 
Um, it has to be said that there was a period not so long ago when it seemed that the change in the way health services in Tayside were being provided meant that the flow of facilities was always away from Perth to Dundee, but a number of developments in recent years have reversed that trend. We have seen the Cancer Care Centre established, and we have also seen further to another long-standing campaign, a dialysis unit uh, providing a satellite service, satellite service from Nine Wells Hospital and enabling therefore Perthshire kidney patients to get access to a treatment facility nearer to their homes. Of course, we must all monitor the situation and be quick to spot opportunities in the years ahead. But I would like to say in conclusion, Presiding Officer, a very big thank you to everyone involved with PRI now and over the past 100 years. Uh, for those of us who live in Persia, and I speak as someone who has received both inpatient and outpatient treatment at PRI, and the level of care on all occasions has been excellent. I hope, therefore, that the PRI continues to grow and develop and to serve the community for many more years to come. Thank you, President Officer. Many thanks. Rosie Grant. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. I want to congratulate Liz Smith in securing the debate. Her motion calls for the centenary of the Perth Royal Infirmary to be marked, and I think this debate does that. However, I'm sure there'll be other local events um, that celebrate the centenary as well. Um, the Perth Royal Infirmary is a district general hospital, embracing new practice and delivering care as close as possible to patients. It's also often the receiving hospital for accidents on the A9, a route that's widely used by many of my constituents, and therefore the Perth Royal Infirmary provides those of us who live in the north eh, with life-saving interventions as well. It provides traditional services, as well as housing new developments such as the Macmillan Hospice, providing palliative care close to home, family and loved ones, something that's really crucial in someone's final days. Um, district general hospitals have a pivotal role to play in providing other interventions such as uh, dialysis and oncology that were already mentioned. Those services need to be provided as locally as possible um, and they can be provided safely in district general hospitals, meaning that patients don't have to travel long distances uh, for those services and it allows patients to be closer to home, to their family and for those who need those interventions and are still able to work much less disruption to their lives and their working day. And we need to move as many services as we can to these hospitals in order that patients are treated as locally, but as safely as possible. And eHealth provides a tool to make that possible, um, making it possible to deliver really complex treatments such, such as chemotherapy locally and giving direct access to backup from very highly skilled clinicians. I saw this myself in the open hospital recently where they provide uh, chemotherapy, but they are in touch um, with the consultants down in Glasgow while they do that. So if there are any problems arise during treatment, they have immediate backup and can work with that. So I think those are the things that we can put out to district general hospitals that make a big difference. Um, can I also pay tribute to the staff at the hospital who work hard to provide a quality care like many in the NHS, they're struggling because of a decrease in staffing numbers and they're facing some of the most challenging times our health service has ever known. Nurses, medical and hospital staff in the NHS tell me they have never known the NHS to be struggling as much as it is today in the entirety of their careers. And indeed, we've had the chair of the BMA now adding his voice to these concerns. We in the Labour Party are asking for a review of the NHS, a beverage 21, to help us deal with these challenges. And I think we owe it to all those who use and work in the NHS eh, to have this review to make sure that we deal with those issues. We need to celebrate the Perth Royal Infirmary centenary and also celebrate the contribution made by hospital staff to patient care in the area. We need to recognise and build on the vital role of our district general hospitals in bringing services closer to patients. And I'm happy to join with Liz Smith in celebrating this centenary. But I think I would also like to celebrate the actions of the suffragettes who used the opening of the hospital to bring to the fore the need for women's emancipation and I wonder what they would think of this debate tonight where three women have spoken led by a woman presided over by a woman I think they would be pretty chuffed and know that their their actions on that day had actually borne fruit so and I think it's also very appropriate because women are the backbone of the NHS so it's very appropriate that they use the, fit, the opening of the hospital to highlight the plight of women and their fight for equality and I think that was a fitting tribute to them. Thank you very much, 
The debate, however, will be responded to by a man. I call in Michael Matheson. Minister, you have around seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Can I like others offer my congratulations to Liz Smith in securing uh, time for this debate? And I have listened with real interest to the contributions that have been made by members uh, this evening. Uh, because uh, Perth uh, Royal Infirmary um, uh, is a key member of the NHS uh, Tayside family, and our ambition as a government is that it should continue to go from strength to strength and to ensure that high quality services and care uh, are delivered for the people of Perth and the surrounding area. And I want to uh, take this opportunity in the course of this debate tonight, sign officer, to pay tribute to the dedication and the professionalism of the staff, both past and present, who work day in and day out to deliver those vital health care services and make the experience of their patients as good as can be. And it is quite right, given that it's uh, 100 anniversary for uh, 100 years uh, anniversary for uh, providing health care uh, on the site, that we should mark that and celebrate it. And our, there are a range of activities. Liz Smith uh, made reference to uh, planned activities at a local level, uh, which include a, a health fair, which I believe will include a, a special birthday cake, uh, an exhibition of uh, photographs uh, and historical artefacts, a day of historical programming on Perth Hospital Radio, right through to a ceremonial relaying of the original royal plaque by the NHS Chair uh, Sandy Watson, which will take place on the 10th of July itself. And members may also be interested to know that the hospital is getting its uh, very own biography. Uh, Bill Lecky, uh, sorry, Bruce Lecky, uh, a member of the uh, staff at NHS Tayside, who previously worked at PRI, uh, has produced a book uh, documenting the building and the royal opening. And uh, Mr Lecky, uh, who kindly joins us tonight, uh, has uh, also indicated that any profits from the sale of the book will be donated to the PRI Endowment Fund. And I would like to offer my thanks on behalf of the Scottish Government for undertaking this piece of work and for his generous donation to the Endowment Fund. Uh, but in celebrating, I think, a very proud history that PRI has, um, I think, uh, and the contribution that both its current and former staff have made, I, I think it's also important we look ahead to the use of PRI and the provision of NHS services within NHS Tayside overall in providing 21st century healthcare to the local people. And I'm sure that uh, all members will recognise the challenge presented by an increasing and an increasingly elderly population. And we're aware that this is particularly relevant in the Perthshire area. Uh, members, some may be aware that the total population Perth and Kinross is projected to increase by 20% between 2012 and 2033. That's over twice the national average of 8%. But the population aged 65 and over is projected to increase by 52 per cent in the same period, and those 75 and over by 75 per cent. And that's precisely why we published our quality strategy and the 2020 vision. And it's a, a complement of a, a, a accompanying a, a route map to ensure that the 2020 vision is taken forward at a local level, allowing individuals to live healthier uh, lives uh, within their own home or in a homely uh, setting. Now, part of the work to deliver the 2020 vision uh, is some of the exciting work that's been taken forward within the NHS Tayside uh, area, including at PRI. There's a creation of the rapid assessment model of care for unscheduled medical patients admissions, which will enable a new model uh, of care to meet the needs of the local population. Uh, the early work in this particular project uh, has been developed through listening to both staff and patients about what they felt would make a difference to the care environment within the hospital itself. And that's included in leading to seven-day multi-professional team working, uh, timely patient discharge and an expansion of the role of volunteers. We all know that good quality health care, though, is not just about new initiatives in themselves. It's also about, at times, just doing the day job really well. And in emergency care, uh, Perth Royal Infirmary is part of a single system of emergency care which operates right across the Tayside region to ensure that patients requiring urgent care are seen at the right place at the right time by the right person. 
And Tayside's uh, performance in this area is amongst the best in Scotland, with over 98% of patients meeting the four-hour A&E standard every year since 2008-2009. They are the only mainland board with such a consistent record in this area. And NHS at Tayside has more than half uh, the size of its inpatient and its day case waiting lists by treating patients faster. Uh, numbers have gone from 7,264 7, patients waiting in March 2006 to 3,031 in March 2014. We now have 91, uh, just over 91 per cent of patients seen and treated within 18 weeks of first referral uh, at March 2014, compared to only 86 per cent in the quarter ending March 2007, despite a rise in the number of inpatient and day cases of over 5.9 per cent in 2012-13. And 99 per cent of patients are waiting less than 12 weeks uh, for, standards, uh, for the standard of first outpatient consultation at the 31st of March 2014, compared to 87 uh, back at the, uh, quart the uh, last quarter in March 2007. These figures, I think, in itself demonstrate the quality of the care that is being delivered within NHS Tayside, including the PRI, and that demonstrates the dedication of the staff there in helping to achieve that. There has also been significant capital investment made over recent years. Uh, my colleague Annabel uh, uh, Ewing made reference to the uh, palliative cancer uh, unit at Perth Royal Infirmary, which was a £6 million investment, uh, with uh, Macmillan, which was completed in 2010, which has made a, a real difference. There has, of course, also been the £75 million, pounds of, uh, million pounds invested into the new Murray Royal Infirmary, uh, the Murray Royal Hospital in Perth, and the £23 million pound Rallon unit as well, uh, which is a specialist unit uh, for uh, mental health issues. So, as a government uh, sign officer, we recognise the important value that the PRI has played over the last 100 years, and it's important that we celebrate and recognise that. But we also see it as an important setting for delivering high class uh, quality services going forward. And as a government, we are determined to make sure that that continues to be the case. Many thanks, Minister. And that concludes Liz Smith's debate on the centenary of Perth Royal Infirmary. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.